This video lecture is meant to cover the information found in Chapter 9, Section 2, which is learning how to write ionic compound formulas and naming ionic compounds. We're going to start first by learning how to write the formulas, the chemical formulas from the individual ions. And the things to remember are listed here. The goal is to make the overall formula neutral. You will then write the cation symbol first and the anion symbol second. You will use subscripts to indicate how many cations and how many anions are needed to make the formula neutral. You will use parentheses around polyatomic ions if you need more than one of them. A subscript of 1 is understood and is not typically written. The ratio of the subscripts should be the lowest reduced ratio. You may need to reduce this ratio if it's not the lowest whole number ratio. And lastly, we don't include the ionic charges in the formula. They disappear because, going back to the first goal, the goal is to make the overall compound formula neutral. If you were to be given these two ions, notice the cation is written first, the anion is written second. The calcium ion is a plus two charge, the chloride ion is a minus one charge. If you had one of each right now, this would not be a neutral compound. So to make it neutral, we're going to need more than one of the anion because the chloride is only a minus one. So really you would need two of the cations, or two of the anions to make it neutral. So the shorthand way to do this is to take the superscript from the cation. That is now going to become the subscript of the anion. And the superscript of the anion becomes the subscript of the cation. Of course, the one will disappear because we don't typically include those. So the final um, formula for this, rewritten nice and neat, is CaCl2. What this implies, this 2 here, implies that you need 2 chlorides for every 1 calcium ion. So if we were to show you what this looks like, here's the 2 chlorine, chlorides, and this is the 1 calcium ion. So the two chlorides, if we were to separate them out, would look like this, and the one calcium ion would separate out and look like this. If you have a polyatomic ion, the process is still the same, but you have to use a parentheses to show that the polyatomic ion stays intact. Here we have magnesium ion, which is a plus two, and the phosphate ion, which is a minus three. To make this neutral, the shorthand method is to take the charge on the magnesium ion, which is A2, that will become the subscript of the phosphate, and the charge on the phosphate will become the subscript on the magnesium. So if we were to then rewrite this, you would see then that this really means that we have three magnesium plus two ions. That's what that subscript means. And two phosphate ions, like so, negative three, negative three. If you add this up, all these charges, plus six, minus six, it ends up being neutral. And when we rewrite this formula, it is written as Mg3, PO4 in parentheses, 2, because we're trying to show that we need two of these very distinct PO4 ions. Naming these compounds. First, you identify the cation name. This name will be written first. You'll need to include Roman numerals if necessary. You'll identify the anion name, and this name will be written second. 
and you drop the ion ending. It's very simple and straightforward so long as you know the names of the ions, which is why we've spent time asking you to memorize the names of all those ions. Putting this into practice, we're going to write the formulas for ionic compounds, binary ionic compounds. Binary means two, and so these are compounds that contain two monoatomic ions, starting with sodium and chloride ion. If I rewrite this as a sodium plus one and a Cl minus one, when I do that crisscross method, I will see that I just need one of each, and so we have an NaCl as our final formula. We would write the name of this as sodium chloride. Na plus one, oxide is O minus two. If I crisscross, I will now see that this two is going to be the subscript next to the sodium. And the charge on the sodium is implied that I will only need one of the oxide ions. Right, so you need two of the positive one ions to match up with one of the negative two ions. This compound is called sodium oxide. Sodium ion and nitride ion crisscrossing. We get the formula Na3, because I'll need three of these positive one ions to match up with one of these nitride ions. So naming this compound, this is sodium nitride. Calcium and chloride crisscrossing. This two goes down here, the one comes down here, so this is Ca, Cl2. And the name of this is calcium chloride. Next one, calcium and oxide. Now here's an example. If you were to do the crisscross method, you would think that the formula would be Ca2O2. But the problem with this, this 2 to 2 ratio, is reducible. So we would actually rewrite this as just CaO. The name of this compound is calcium oxide. Calcium and nitride. Crisscrossing here, the formula becomes Ca3N2. The name of this compound is calcium nitride. Aluminum plus three, Cl minus one. Crisscrossing, we get Al, Cl, three. The name of this compound is aluminum chloride. The next one, aluminum and oxide. Crisscrossing, we get Al2O3. This is called aluminum oxide. And the last one on this page is aluminum and nitride crisscrossing. You'd think you should have the formula Al3N3, but this is reducible down. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so this is ALN, and this would be called aluminum nitride. We go to the second page. These are uh, more examples of binary ionic compounds. But now we have uh, the, the example of our cations here is iron plus two and iron plus three. 
we know that this is the iron Roman numeral 2 ion, and this is the iron Roman numeral 3 ion. So we have to make sure that we include that in the name as we work through this naming practice. Starting by writing the formula Fe plus 2, Cl minus 1. Crisscrossing the formula becomes Fe Cl2. And the name of this substance is iron 2 chloride. Moving over to the right, Fe plus 3, Cl minus 1. This formula is FeCl3. So this substance is iron 3 chloride. Notice on the convention with the Roman numerals, you can include parentheses around the Roman numerals, as I did in the first example, or you do not have to include parentheses around Roman numeral 2. It's sort of an either or situation. Fe plus 2, O minus 2. Crisscrossing, it looks like you should have Fe2O2, but that is a 1 to 1 ratio. So the correct formula is FeO. The name of this substance is iron 2 oxide. Fe plus 3, O minus 2. Crisscrossing, we get Fe2. O3. This is iron 3 oxide. So here's a good example of where you don't want to get confused. Iron 3 doesn't tell you how many irons there are. In this case, iron 3, as in all these cases, iron 3, the Roman numeral 3, tells you that the charge is a plus 3. It does not tell you how many irons are needed to make the compound neutral. Fe plus 2, N minus 3, crisscrossing, we get Fe 3, N 2. The name of this substance is iron 2 nitride. Our last example here, Fe plus 3, N minus 3, crisscrossing properly and reducing, we have Fe N. This is iron 3 nitride. Now, ternary ionic compounds are compounds that contain polyatomic ions, and this complicates our formula writing just a little bit, but with a little care and attention to detail, it's not a problem at all. If we take a look here, we have sodium plus 1 and NO3 minus 1. Plus 1, minus 1, you're only going to need one of each, so we would rewrite this formula as NaNO3. Now notice that I dropped the parentheses, because parentheses are typically not used unless you need to indicate that you needed m more than one of those nitrates, and in this case we only needed one. So we typically drop the parentheses. This substance is called sodium nitrate. working our way down. Na plus 1, SO4 minus 2. Crisscrossing, we're going to need two sodiums to match up with the one sulfate to make it neutral. So again, I'm dropping the parentheses. This substance is called sodium sulfate. Next example, sodium and phosphate, which is a minus 3. Crisscrossing, the formula becomes Na3. I'll need three of those sodiums to match up with the one phosphate, because it's a minus 3. So again, the parentheses have dropped. The name of this substance is sodium phosphate. Next example over, Ca plus 2, NO3 minus 1.
crisscrossing. Now here is where we're going to need to show that we need more than one nitrate because calcium's a plus two and nitrate's a minus one. So crisscrossing, we get the formula Ca, open parentheses, NO3, close parentheses, two. That indicates that we're gonna need two of those nitrates. The name of the substance is calcium nitrate. The next example, Ca plus two, sulfate minus two. If we crisscross, we think you're gonna, we think you might get the Ca2SO42 formula, but it's since it's really just uh, the, the charges cancel out, the overall neutral compound is written as CaSO4. The parentheses drop because we're only showing that we need one of those sulfates, and this is calcium sulfate. Here we have Ca plus two and phosphate minus three. Crisscrossing, we get Ca3, PO4 in parentheses, two. The name of this substance is calcium phosphate. Aluminum and Nitrate, Al plus three, NO3 minus one. Crisscrossing, we get Al. One of those is needed to match up with three of these nitrates, so NO3 in parentheses, three. And the name of this is aluminum nitrate. Next one, Al plus three, SO4 minus two. Crisscrossing, I get Al2, SO4 in parentheses, three. The name of this substance is aluminum sulfate. Last one on this page is Al plus three, PO4 minus three, because the charges are identical in magnitude the formula just becomes AlPO4, parentheses drop, because I only need one of those phosphates, and the name of this substance is aluminum phosphate. Okay, a couple more examples to work through to show you what happens when we have the iron two and the iron three ions. And also we're all gonna work through an example using the ammonium ion, which is one of the few polyatomic ions that is positively charged. So ammonium is the NH4 plus one ion. We're gonna match it up with the nitrate minus one ion because it's plus one minus one. We just need one of each. So we're going to write NH4, NO3, one ammonium ion matches up with one nitrate ion, and we call this ammonium nitrate. In the next example, we are putting ammonium together with sulfate, SO4, minus two. Crisscrossing here, we're gonna need two of the ammoniums. So I'm gonna show that as NH4 in parentheses, two. SO4. Now again, I have parentheses around the ammonium to show that I need two of those NH4 groups, but I don't have parentheses around the SO4 because I only needed one of those. So this substance is called ammonium sulfate. In this third example, NH4 plus one is paired up with PO4 minus three. So I'm going to need three of these NH4 ammonium ions to match up with one of these phosphate groups. So again, parentheses around the NH4 because I needed to show more than one of them. In fact, I needed to show three of them. But no parentheses around the PO4 because I only needed one of those. 
The name of this substance is ammonium phosphate. Marching on, Fe plus 2 is paired up with NO3 minus 1. Crisscrossing, we get Fe, NO3, in parentheses, 2. The name of this substance is iron 2. Remember, the Roman numeral 2 implies that this is the plus 2 ion. Nitrate. The next pairing, Fe plus 2, is matched up with SO4 minus 2. Plus 2 minus 2, we only need one of each. We would rewrite this as FeSO4, and the name of this substance is iron 2 sulfate. The third example in this column pairs Fe plus 2 with PO4 minus 3. Crisscrossing, the formula becomes Fe3. PO4 in parentheses 2. The name of this substance is iron 2 phosphate. The third and final column pairs up iron plus 3 with NO3 minus 1. Crisscrossing, we get Fe, NO3 in parentheses 3. We need three of those nitrates to exactly, uh, to make a minus 3 overall charge to pair up with the iron plus 3. The name of this substance is iron 3 nitrate. The next pairing is Fe plus 3 paired up with SO4 minus 2. Crisscrossing, we get the formula Fe2. SO4 in parentheses, 3. The name of this substance is iron 3 sulfate. And the last pairing, Fe plus 3, is paired up with PO4 minus 3. Plus 3, minus 3, we only need one of each. So this formula is Fe PO4. And the name of this substance is iron 3 phosphate. All right, this concludes the video lecture on naming ionic compounds and writing ionic compound formulas.